Hi, Darson. Hi, Sheila. Very nice to see you. Thank you for coming. I would like to just jump right into it. And my first question would be quite obvious. How did you get to know FDM? Oh, I get to know FDM about 2004, maybe. I um, got under the wings of an old osteopath from Hanover here. And um, uh, he visited a seminar with Georg. And after the seminar, his uh, approach and his, how do you say, his behavior changed. And uh, I looked up to this man very much. And as I saw, oh, there's somebody above him who can influence him so strong. <laughs> I was very impressed. And then he showed me CDs, trigger bands, and HDPs. And uh, then I worked like one and a half years, two years with HDP, CDs, trigger bands. And uh, then I invited Georg myself and I wrote him an email. And he answered me after it was 2006, in the beginning of 2006. And uh, there was no WhatsApp, nothing. It was just email. He answered me in 15 minutes. He doesn't even answer me today <laughs> in one week. But then he answered me in 15 minutes. I got an answer. And he came, I think, October uh, 26. And I was very, very, very nervous. I took him from the airport as I was the organizer. And he came from the airplane. His face was red. His clothes looked like this. And... His little hair that he had was all messed up. And I asked him, oh, Dr. How are you okay? And she said, oh, yeah, but I collapsed in the airplane. And I was the only doctor in this airplane. So this was pretty bad. And she was so sick in the first seminar. And she fell asleep in my car when I drove him to the seminar. And he was coughing on Sunday. We started on Friday, I think. And, but he did not give up. He apologized to me like a hundred times that he did not drink a beer with me in the evening after the seminar. I had to buy a pizza for him with garlic and strong pepperoni. He just took this pizza in his room, which I organized for him. And then I took him the next morning and it was very impressive. And uh, he finished until Sunday and he even invited Christian Stein. He's a doctor from Hanover who did a study. And this was a very, very uh, impressive seminar for me. And then I invited him a second time. And uh, then he invited me to his clinic. And I went some time to his clinic. I slept in his house. And uh, so I got, got a connection to him and to FDM. Are you an entrepreneur now? How do you work? Yes, I'm working in a clinic with some colleagues. Some do FDM. Everybody works for himself. But we are in a big clinic with like... Uh, seven eight people and you are an fdm instructor as well how did it come to your life why did you start oh um actually i have to say that my fdm life was very much influenced by georg hara i have to say that my my first impression my first seminar was not so nice actually yes i was the organizer it started it started quite bizarre but when this, when I came home in the evening, then I was very much ashamed of myself. I have to tell you, many, many people who visit FDM seminars, they always say, oh, I changed my life. It was so good. For me, it was not so good because I came from osteopathy school and uh, Georg, everything what he told and when he, what he did in the seminar sounded so logic to me. And he just told me in this first seminar, you are allowed to think for yourself. And so I was very, very, very ashamed of myself that I didn't allow myself to, to think for myself. So my first feeling was actually was really not so good after the first seminar. And then he asked me to be his assistant in the seminars. And then for long years, I assisted in his seminars. And um, I just like this, uh, this kind of... Um, sharing this uh, in the seminars because, I, you know, we go around, we show people, we help them. And this was a lot of uh, fun to me. And it was also a dedication. As Georg gave something to me, it was a dedication for me to give it back to other people and just to uh, make it possible for other people to hear and learn about this. 
and this was actually the main reason there may be some more little reason but this was the main reason for me to start to teach that's so cool uh, every person i ask about fdm they talk about this kind of thankfulness that they feel um and mm -hmm. they want to give back uh, they see fdm as a gift or first uh, as a gift not only as a burden mm -hmm. Um, and they want to give it back. Uh, they want to give it uh, to other people as well. So I can really see it in you as well. It's, it's so nice. And I also heard that you took this passion with you to Iran. Can you tell me something about that? Ah, yes, it started in, um, in 2017-18. The, we had many more instructors in uh, Europe. And... Um, I saw that the groups get smaller and smaller and we had so many seminars and I thought um, we have so many instructors in Europe and, and there are so many countries where, where we don't have FDM. And I, in, in Hanover, where I live here in Northern Germany, we have a lot of Iranian people. I don't know why actually. And uh, I have a lot of Iranian patients and I always felt some connection to these uh, people. I don't know why either. And then I just uh, wrote an email to the University of Tehran and they answered me after a short amount of times. It was a very, very friendly conversation. And um, then in May 28, we started the first seminar and I was just impressed by this uh, country, by the mentality. And it, uh, I'm, I was 48 at that time and it was really... Uh, how do you say, a new impulse in my life Co uh, compared to other seminars I give here. That's so cool. And since yeah. then, uh, how, how often do you do seminars in Iran? Oh, I think I went there now five or six times and uh, we did now some module ones and module twos and now we wanted to do the, the module three and um, yeah, I think I went there five, six times. And I have to tell actually that the, the physiotherapy is a study. It's not like in Germany, like private schools. It's an official university study. And they get master and bachelor degrees there and PhDs. And so uh, there are already some uh, PhD students. They make studies about FDM. And uh, they uh, push the FDM. And this made me very happy too. Yeah, and uh, after the seminars now, I stayed some days longer and we even had the work groups for FDM. So we saw patients in the, in, the, in the School of Rehabilitation of the Tehran University. And it was so cool. Many of the old students came, the new students came and we just watched patients together. We exchanged and it was very, very nice. This mentality of hospitality that we have, especially in, in Iran, you know, it's very unusual for us because I'm socialized here. I lived all my life in Germany and I'm socialized with the people around me in this country that everything you, um, you do for another, you do for money. Our exchange is money. That's our tool. But in Iran, it's not like this. People do a lot of things for you without money without even wanting money for it. You will shame them if you give them money. They don't do it for free, but the payment that, that they have is, they are happy that you are happy. If they see you, you are happy with this. You make them happy. It's a different form of payment, you know? This was uh, unusual for me, <laughs> very much. And it opened my horizon too. And I think this is also one of the, factors hopefully in FDM if we exchange more in the world we will learn more for each other we will learn more to open our horizon by by seeing the way we were educated the way we live it's not the only way in this world there are many many more ways yeah you can lead your life you can uh, um, cooperate with others you can communicate with other people and live to people and live together oh this is so awesome everything you say is just I don't know, it just touches my heart on such a, a deep level, really. And, and this is what I often 
feel uh, with FDM people or FDM freaks that they, they really are into it and they really give their heart to FDM. And at the end, it's not to FDM, it's for patients, right? And for other therapists. So they can also experience this kind of joy, which comes from helping patients. Yes, that's it. Yeah. And you know, we have a universal tool. When I have in my presentation or in the beginning, yes, of every module one, I show some patient videos from uh, Iran, from Poland, from Russia, from Germany, from Switzerland. And everybody, every student understands the body language is everywhere the same in the world. And as you see now in this world, everybody's looking for dividing factors. And it seems like we are the only ones who really take, take the individual subjective complaints. We take it really serious because we have objectification in medicine now. And we are, I see, I see no other approach that really respects the subjective uh, this description from a patient and also this universe, uh, universal body language. Yeah, and this is really what we do now. And that's why I went to Iran too to say we need to spread this. I think I, I don't want to sound too pathetic, but I think really in these times the world needs us. Maybe in those times now more than ever to show people no, we can connect, we can cooperate. According to those factors, you know, when we see those factors, then we can show people, no, there are uh, universal things in this world which connect us all. And I think all of us FDM therapists know that kind of look on the face of the patient of being thankful. Uh, yes. Just the thing that we are listening, right? that we take them serious, it makes them so thankful, so happy, and they, they automatically trust us. Uh, and I think this is also something very universal. That's it. And for us instructors, it's the same if you stand in front of the students and you see the faces of the students. You see the same face as on the patients. We can be patients tomorrow, and we will be thankful too, I think. Absolutely. Do you have pets? Say it again. Do you have pets? Pets? Animals? Yeah. No, sadly enough. I want to have. And uh, I would like to have a llama. I like llamas very much. Sorry. Heavy metal or techno? Heavy metal or techno? Both. And combination okay. too. On a scale of 1 to 10, how weird are you? Minus 1. What would you cook for Celine Dion? For Celine Dion? Oh, I, have, I haven't got her face now in front of me, but it doesn't matter. I cannot cook so much. I would cook what I cook for my children, what I always cook. And she has to eat it or not, then she will stay hungry. <laughs> Milk rice, you know this? And uh, tortellini with pesto. Do you iron? Yes, very much, very much. I iron here. And on this table, I have always my laptop and watch documentations. I love iron, as you hopefully see. Yes, this is why I asked. <laughs> what changes would you like to see in EFDMA's work? I think we had the last years, we had a, um, a lot of building up the internal structures. And um, I would like to see the, the um, EFDMA more like um, more like an innovation for therapists. Um, I maybe it's hard in the medical sector, but we have some some uh, club here or some organization. It's called Chaos Computer Congress. Yeah, I think it's a club from Hamburg, and they one time a year they they organize a congress, and on this congress they are very very innovative. You can watch the. You can watch the presentations in the internet and very interesting topics. Topics, and I would like to the EFDMA to be to go more into this direction, not to follow others, but to give uh, our own points into the world. I also feel like we need to move a little bit into the future direction and to show mm -hmm. more from us. This is, for example, one reason why I'm doing these interviews because mm -hmm. it's very nice for like normal therapists 
uh, normal members to get to know us a little bit more so they know how we are, what we do, how our life is, why we do what we do. Um, and this is why I think it's very good that you took your time and answered my questions. And um, just one more question. If a normal FDM therapist would like to get a bit more involved in the FDM wave, um, how would you suggest to them to start? Actually, in the moment, I see a, I see a problem in the, in the consequence. Of, of many therapists. Um, they are very enthusiastic in the seminars, but after the seminars, it gets less and less and less. And with all these advanced seminars, we build up, it's like a consume, you know, just consuming seminars. And I think it would be a good way to have some FDM hospital or something like this, where you could go for three weeks and just stay for three weeks and just treat patients together under supervision and all this. For every single therapist, I think it's good to stay consequent, to, to look in the hands uh, handouts and, uh, and just to, to be a good therapist. And just always ask yourself first, maybe I do something wrong. I give the wrong diagnosis or my, my techniques are not so good. I saw when we did the advanced seminars, I saw a lot of uh, therapists, they had expectations. Now we would present the seventh distortion in this seminar. And then we practiced a lot of old techniques and, uh, and they were bored, the, the uh, students, yes, but I saw they could not even do the old techniques. So then I, I think maybe in the clinic, if they, um, treat the patient and they cannot fix the patient, then they would say, oh, I think it's atrocious. <laughs> That's because the technique was not good. Yeah, And uh, this is what I see. And I maybe we should change the structure. It's a little, little contact. We have only 12 days together now with the students. And then we lose each other. And everybody goes back into his clinic and just does his thing. And... Uh, I now give my, my phone number to a lot of students and I see also after the seminars, a lot of them send me some patient videos and I do some screenshots and I give them some hints and I ask them to give me feedback. But this becomes less and less and less after the seminars. Yeah. And I think we need to find a way to, to stay in contact better and to, to share this together. And also, not that the instructors are here and the normal student is here. Yeah, we need to, to, at some point, we need to develop this together. Let me thank you for coming. This interview was touching, it was motivating, it was fun. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you later. Okay, thank you, Sheila. Bye-bye.